Caregiving can sometimes feel like an impossible struggle. Caregivers may be torn between taking care of loved ones and trying to maintain balance in life. The good news is that it doesn't have to be that way. The Caring Generation with host Pamela D. Wilson is here to focus on the conversation of caring. You're not alone. In fact, you're in exactly the right place to share stories and learn tips and resources to help you and your loved ones. So now, please welcome the host of The Caring Generation, Pamela D. Wilson. This is Pamela D. Wilson, caregiving expert, speaker, consultant, and guardian of the caring generation. The caring generation focuses on the conversation of caring, giving us permission to talk about aging, the challenges of caregiving, and everything in between. It's no surprise that needing care or becoming a caregiver changes everything. The caring generation is here to guide you along the journey to let you know that you're not alone. You are in exactly the right place to share stories and learn about caregiving programs and resources to help you and your loved ones plan for what's ahead. Invite your aging parents, spouses, family, friends, colleagues at work, and others to listen to the show. If you have a question or an idea for a future program, share your idea with me by responding to my social media posts on Facebook Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and LinkedIn. This week, I'm answering the question caregivers ask. Why having an emergency medical plan for elderly parents is important. If you consider yourself just helping out elderly parents or grandparents now and then, it's important to consider that as they age, any health problems they have today can worsen. Or, if they are perfectly healthy today, some unexpected health change is likely to happen. Changes in health happen to everyone. If you look back at your life, what health events stand out? Maybe you had chicken pox or measles or had your tonsils removed. Did you ever go to the dentist and need fillings or have your wisdom teeth removed? While we may not consider these a health concern, they do represent a change in health. For example, one day a person is healthy and the next day they're not. Feeling good, being healthy, and then experiencing changes is part of life for everyone. Aging is associated with an increased likelihood of health concerns, especially if you didn't learn about aspects of staying healthy, what you should do to stay healthy early in life. For some of us, watching a grandparent or a parent struggle with poor health may have been an early life lesson that changed how you look at health. If this was you, You might have done some research and made some lifestyle changes. Knowing that just because health concerns run in your family, like high blood pressure or diabetes, doesn't mean that your destiny is to experience the same health issues as your parents. While research confirms that some health issues may be hereditary, much of our health depends on daily nutrition and exercise habits. So being healthy is more in control, in our control, than we might think. The goal to be healthy relates to physical and mental health. Many factors in life depend on maintaining a positive, consistent mental outlook. If you have negative parents who complain, worry, or criticize, they are more likely to experience poor health. Depression and anxiety are related to health concerns like digestive disorders, heart disease, obesity, sleep disorders, thyroid problems, breathing problems, substance abuse, and chronic pain. Adults diagnosed with chronic health problems may experience depression because of the everyday stress of managing a chronic disease that can cause worry and anxiety. So, Focusing on proactive and preventative health habits and maintaining a positive mental attitude 
is essential if you want to stay healthy. The experience of chronic health problems and mental health concerns is why having an emergency medical plan for elderly parents is crucial if you are an adult child, a spouse in a caregiving role, or if you may eventually be a family caregiver. Being a family caregiver can be rewarding, but also very stressful, resulting in health concerns for the caregiver. Caregiver stress and anxiety also means family caregivers should have their own emergency medical plan. Think of an emergency medical plan as a backup plan to make sure that you, an aging parent or a spouse, get the care you need in the event of a sudden or unexpected change in health or a hospitalization. If you or your elderly parents don't regularly see a doctor, you may have little experience dealing with the healthcare system and the information routinely required or requested to get good care. Likewise, if you've never visited anyone in the hospital or a nursing home, you may have no experience with these healthcare environments. So, in a sense, navigating healthcare by working with doctors, nurses, and other personnel may feel like visiting a foreign country where the residents don't speak the same language. The healthcare industry definitely has its own language. They have terms and acronyms that they use that most consumers don't understand unless you stop the person speaking and ask a question. Navigating unfamiliar territory is critical for creating an emergency medical plan for elderly parents or yourself. You don't know what you don't know, and maybe you don't even know the questions you should be asking. So, having basic information at your fingertips can reduce the moment stress and allow you to focus on what is most important. Supplying information to help your loved one receive a health diagnosis and a treatment plan. So let's review why having an emergency medical plan for elderly parents is important, plus the information you want to collect so that you have it readily available if mom or dad has a sudden change in health. If you currently attend doctor's appointments with elderly parents, or if you attend routine doctor appointments for yourself, think of the information you supply every time you visit. The person at the front desk usually hands you a clipboard and wants you to verify your identification and health insurance. One of the first steps in creating an emergency medical plan for elderly parents is to make copies of their health insurance and identification cards. For elderly parents, begin with copying, scanning, or taking a photo of a driver's license or a state ID with a photograph that you can print. Then, make copies of both sides of health insurance cards, which can be a parent's red, white, and blue Medicare card or another insurance card, like AARP Secure Horizons, Kaiser, Anthem, TRICARE, or another alternate insurance provider. If you are a parent's agent for Medical Durable Power of Attorney, you'll want to send that document to the health insurance companies so that you can speak to them in addition to your parent. We'll talk more about the importance of having legal documents to manage health care later in the program. What other questions does the staff at the doctor's office ask? For example, they want to know what medications and supplements your parent takes. The easiest way to provide this information is to write or type a list that you can keep and that your parents can keep in a wallet or purse. Make sure to include all of the over-the-counter supplements. These might be products like multivitamins, vitamin C, Advil, aspirin, even Metamucil. Including over-the-counter items on a medical list is essential because sometimes non-prescription products 
can negatively interact with prescription medications. Know that elderly parents who don't take their medications as prescribed, or they may forget, is one of the main reasons for hospital emergency room visits. So if your parents are struggling to order, pick up, take, or set up their prescription medications, this is one area where family caregivers can assist. If you go to the pharmacy to pick up their medications somewhere nearby on a shelf, you'll find weekly plastic medication boxes marked with the days of the week and then options for morning, noon, afternoon, and bedtime. There'll be slots for those. Family caregivers can pick up medications and then set them up for an entire week or several weeks at a time. Creating an emergency medical plan for elderly parents also includes making a list of your parents' health diagnosis and understanding what these mean. Where do you find this information? Access to an online health portal for a doctor's office will have this information. Or if you don't have access, with your parents' permission, written permission, you can contact the doctor's office to request a document called an H and P. This is a history and physical. And you can also request recent doctor visit notes. These documents should list current medications, over-the-counter products, and health diagnosis. Now, it's important to remember that some of this information is provided by your parent if they are establishing care with a new physician or if they've been seeing a physician for some time. But remember, The information in a medical chart may be incorrect or may be entered incorrectly by staff. So it's critical to review this information for accuracy. And I'll share a simple personal example. I recently went for a checkup and the person who took my vitals entered my weight as 196.2 pounds when my actual weight is actually 70 pounds less than that. The doctor came in and she looked at me and she she said, well, how much did you weigh today? And I said, well, 126.2. And she said, hmm, your body mass index is calculated at 32. You think the staff would have noticed that, it really should be 21. So she corrected my weight. Any inaccurate detail that a physician relies on when looking at paperwork and attempting to diagnose or treat a patient can cause serious problems. So as a family caregiver or as the patient, it's important to take time to really closely review your medical records for accuracy. And if there are inaccuracies or incorrect information, request that the staff make updates. An emergency medical plan for elderly parents should also include a list of past surgeries and their approximate dates. For example, if your parents had a hip or knee replacement and metal parts were put in the body, this is really important to know if an MRI or other type of body scan is needed. Having a list of allergies to medications or food is also important, along with listing the type of reaction. Maybe mom or dad is allergic to bee stings or eating onions, or they experience nausea or vomiting or even leg cramps when taking a particular medication. All this is important for doctors to know so that they don't prescribe a medication that will cause problems. Along with documenting all this information, List contact information for the pharmacy or the pharmacies your parents prefer to use. Include the name, address, and telephone number. While gathering and compiling this information can take some time and effort, it will make your job as a caregiver so much easier over time. You'll have a book of historical information for your parents that you can take to any doctor's appointment, any hospitalization, that you attend. You'll also have all the information you need for the staff at the doctor's office or the hospital emergency room. 
Next, and this is as much for yourself as for your parents, create an emergency contact list. Who is your parents' agent under a medical or financial power of attorney? Do your parents have these legal documents? Then add a list of siblings or family members to be notified if your parents are in the hospital. Oh, and before I forget, returning to the topic of doctors. If your parents see multiple doctors, meaning specialists, like a cardiologist, urologist, endocrinologist, pulmonologist, you want to add these doctors into the list of information that you create. And if you print a copy from the portal of the most recent specialist doctor's visit notes or request a copy, add these to the book. Compiling this information is important because if multiple doctors are each prescribing medications, each doctor should know who is prescribing what medicine and managing what condition. A lack of communication between doctors can be a recipe for disaster if one doctor crosses over to another's territory and starts changing medications. Specialists are specialists for a reason. Physician specialists have more expertise in certain areas than primary care physicians, which is very valuable for managing specific health conditions. Why having an emergency medical plan for elderly parents is also important for managing the household. If a parent goes to the hospital and stays for several days, or if mom goes to the hospital and then transfers to a skilled nursing community or a nursing home for rehabilitation. Do your parents have pets who will need attention? Are there plants in the home that will need watering? What about picking up the mail or stopping the newspaper? Then there are light timers. Can you put these in the house so it looks like someone is home in the evenings? What about watering the lawn, making sure the lawn sprinklers go off, or shoveling snow if it's winter? Is there food in the refrigerator that will spoil if not removed? What about taking out the trash? There are so many other practical considerations. Having an emergency medical plan for elderly parents goes beyond the basics of managing health concerns to responsibility for maintaining their home. Let's take a short break and we'll return to more on why having an emergency medical plan for elderly parents is important. Know that caregiving doesn't have to be a do-it-yourself job. This podcast, The Caring Generation, answers questions caregivers ask. The podcast is available worldwide on my website and your favorite podcast and music apps, including Apple, Spotify, Spreaker, and others. This is Pamela D. Wilson, caregiving expert and elder care consultant on The Caring Generation. Stay with me. I'll be right back. This is Pamela D. Wilson, caregiver, expert, advocate, and author on The Caring Generation. Check out my website, PamelaDWilson.com, where you will find my online caregiver course to help elderly parents stay at home, my book, The Caregiving Trap, my caregiver blog, a library of articles, and this podcast, along with a transcript, and links to information that I share to research on each podcast. There's something for everyone at PamelaDWilson.com. Another reason for why having an emergency medical plan for elderly parents is important is if you are a family caregiver who lives at a distance, in a different town across the country, maybe out of the country, or if you can't go to the hospital to visit a parent or visit at a nursing home, then having this information on hand is extremely important because there's no substitute for being what I call on the ground and available during a health emergency for a parent. 
So in a perfect world, it's best to take or meet elderly parents at the hospital emergency room if they have to call 911. When anyone is sick or not feeling well, they may not relay information accurately to doctors or other healthcare personnel. Plus, if an elderly parent has any degree of memory loss, extreme pain, and confusion about being in a strange place, which is the hospital, these issues can result in more disorientation and confusion. This is why having an emergency plan for elderly parents on paper is important. If you have all of this information typed or written down and documented, worst case, you can fax it, email it, or find a way to, rele to relay the information to the doctors in the emergency room if you can't be there in person. Then let's talk about the actual hospital stay. Hospital stays are the place for treatment and monitoring if there's a health emergency. But hospitals certainly are not the place for a patient to get any type of rest. There are endless rounds of nurse and staff interruptions to take vitals, blood pressure, temperature, and pulse every four hours around the clock, day and night. Add to this blood draws, making a parent wonder if they will have any veins that have not been stuck with needles. Then IV bags may need to be changed every couple hours. And there's machines in hospital rooms that beep all over the place. So sleep, while very healing, rarely happens for more than a few hours at a time when a person is in the hospital, which is why your parents may look so exhausted when you see them, right? So as a result, most patients, by the time they leave the hospital, are extremely sleep deprived. Then imagine this while in the hospital. There are always suggestions to, especially for elderly people, to get out of bed for some activity and to walk the halls. Lying in bed for elderly parents for any extended period of time can result in greater physical weakness if a parent was not physically active and strong before the hospital stay. Even the simple act of taking a shower or washing one's hair can be a major physical endeavor that requires scheduling. For example, if your parent has an IV, that has to be disconnected, and then the arm has to be wrapped in plastic so it doesn't get wet. And then depending on the area where the IV is placed, if it's in the bend of the arm, your parent isn't going to be able to bend their arm to even use that arm to shower or wash their hair. Now, if you're a family member, you can offer to assist a loved one to take a shower if they're physically not at risk of falling. Otherwise, the CNAs in the hospital can do this, but you have to schedule it. You have to ask for it, right? Another important reminder, don't take or leave any important personal belongings at the hospital that can become lost or stolen. A purse, hearing aids, dentures, all these things can easily disappear. So what this means is that while an elderly parent receives treatment in the hospital, for a specific medical concern, mom or dad may be in a weaker physical condition when they go home or if they discharge to rehab before going home. So it's important to have a plan for a loved one to be discharged from the hospital or skilled nursing or to go home, which is another reason why having an emergency medical plan for elderly parents is critical. If your parent is still physically weak when returning home, what's the plan? Will you or another family member or a friend stay with mom or dad at their house for several days to avoid the risk of an accident and your parent returning to the hospital? While it may be hard for healthy family caregivers to imagine health conditions that result in hospitalizations, can really result in serious setbacks for elderly parents in for poor physical condition, those who have a lot of diagnoses, or even those diagnosed with memory loss. 
If you live far away, who will pick up their prescriptions and groceries so that they have something to eat when they go home or have the ingredients to even make a meal? Is your parent physically safe to bathe alone without experiencing a fall or an injury? If they have pets, can they take care of the pets? When creating an emergency medical plan for elderly parents beyond a hospitalization or a nursing home stay, there are so many things to consider. Depending on your parents' health, it can take weeks or even months to recover fully. Or a parent may not bounce back from health issues and require more ongoing care. So, for example, let's say your parent breaks a hip. Recovering from a hip fracture can take three to six months, sometimes nine to 12 months, depending on the age and the health of your parent. It's not like when we're young, we're 20 years old, we have a health issue, we're good in a couple of days. When you're 60, 70, 80, or 90, depending on your health, recovery can be a very serious issue and it can take a lot of time. So questions to ask are, is it possible that your parent may not be able to continue to live independently in their home? If no, then what do you do? If you are a family caregiver going through this process of creating an emergency medical plan, you want to investigate options or at least be aware of where to go for information about hiring in-home caregivers, looking at assisted living communities, and nursing homes. While the hope for all families is that these options may not be necessary, the future health condition of a parent can be hard to predict. There can be a lot of ups and downs, particularly if there are multiple health conditions. If your parent is hospitalized and you haven't created an emergency medical plan, then use the time while they are hospitalized or in a nursing home to start gathering all this information. Also learn about the options for more care. It's better to have this information on hand and not need it than to need it and not have a plan, except for you to be the caregiver who provides 24-7 care or has to take time off work. Know that upon discharge home from a hospital or a nursing home, an elderly parent must commit, and I say commit, to participating in recommendations from doctors about physical therapy, exercise, taking medications, health recommendations, and so on, if they want to get better. Taking these actions can really be a mind game. If your parent is depressed or anxious or feeling hopeless about the day-to-day situation, Because it really is challenging to be a person who is active one day, you're doing everything, you're taking care of your life and yourself, and the next day you go to the hospital and two weeks you come home and you just don't feel well. It's as if you wonder if you'll ever feel well again. So as the caregiver, you may have to be insistent to the point where you actually exercise with a parent, cook their meals, Take extra steps to ensure their participation. Know that because of being in the hospital and the effect on the body, your elderly parent may be tired or exhausted or experience low energy when returning home. There's always a recommendation for a follow-up medical appointment that should be scheduled as soon as possible after returning home with a primary care doctor or a specialist so that they can do a checkup, run some blood work to ensure that levels in the blood are maintained or that they're returning to normal levels. Also, excellent nutrition is vital to help parents return to normal energy levels. Now, a lot of elderly parents will say, oh, I'm too tired, I don't have an appetite, I don't feel like eating. So they refuse to eat more than a few bites of food. But when you think about it, Food fuels the body. If they don't eat, they're not going to have any energy. If they don't eat, they're not going to recover. They won't have the energy to exercise. Physical activity, exercise, as challenging as it may be, is one of the ways to improve energy levels and to improve appetite. A hospital stay can truly be life-changing for a person of any age. 
A commitment to physical effort and positive thinking is really required for having a full recovery. So what else remains on the list for why having an emergency plan for elderly parents is important? The obvious is to make an effort each day to improve and maintain health so that if a sudden change in health occurs, the long-term effects won't be as life-changing. Then along these lines is the importance of establishing regular care with a physician who can get to know you and your elderly parents. Regular means seeing a doctor each year for blood work and a checkup so that you know your numbers, for blood sugar, cholesterol, triglycerides, blood pressure, and so on. The idea here of the regular appointments is to prevent health issues from happening, or if they are identified, to give you the opportunity to make lifestyle changes so that your life won't be so significantly affected. You won't be medically affected. You won't be mentally affected by worrying about managing these health conditions. This also allows you and your parents to establish access to the doctor's health care portal where you can look at your health diagnosis, your medications, your recommended tests, and you can even communicate back and forth with the doctor. Regular medical care with a doctor you trust is important for adults of all ages, not only elderly loved ones. So if you or your parents aren't yet established with a primary care doctor for regular care, add this to your to-do list and get this set up now. The other item we discussed only briefly is the aspect of having family or others who can help make medical decisions or pay bills if you or a parent is sick. For more on the subject of estate planning documents that include a medical and financial power of attorney, a living will, or a will or trust, there are many articles on my website, PamelaDWilson.com, about why these are important and the information everyone should know throughout the process. If you have a parent diagnosed with memory loss in the later stages and these documents were not completed, then you may be looking at guardianship and conservatorship. Articles about these topics are also on my website at PamelaDWilson.com. The better prepared you are by having an emergency medical plan for elderly parents and yourself that is well thought out and organized, the less stressed you'll feel when an unexpected situation arises. Creating these documents also allow you and your family and your parents to discuss health issues and the medical care and treatment that is wanted or not wanted. So rather than being in the dark about your parents' wishes, your wishes, your spouse's wishes, you will be able to ensure that desires for care are in writing. They're put in place to the best of your abilities and within the constraints of the financial ability to pay for care. Going through this activity will also allow you to make a similar plan for yourself. Now, if you're looking for support in caring for aging loved ones or yourself and you want to make a plan, an extensive plan beyond this, there's an extensive educational webinar program on my website that you can watch. Go to PamelaDWilson.com. You're going to see a search bar at the top right. Type in the words, support caring for elderly parents. And you'll be taking, taken to a page that lists the online program. There's eight different segments. It's there for everybody to access 24-7. Thanks so much for joining me for why having an emergency medical plan for elderly parents is important. I hope that you found the information valuable. This is Pamela D. Wilson, family caregiving expert on the caring generation. If you're looking for answers to caregiving and aging questions, visit my website, PamelaDWilson.com, where you'll find my caregiving library, online caregiver courses, the Caring for Aging Parents blog, and my book, The Caregiving Trap, plus that extensive step-by-step -step online webinar program that I mentioned to help you learn the A to Z of caring for elderly parents. Again, thanks for being here. I look forward to being with you again soon. God bless you all. I'm sending love and light to everyone. Sleep well tonight. Have a fabulous day tomorrow. And enjoy each day until we are here together again. Tune in each week for The Caring Generation with host Pamela D. Wilson. 
Come join the conversation and see how Pamela can provide solutions and peace of mind for everyone. Here on Pamela D. Wilson's The Caring Generation.